how do I get prepared? It's a question I think more and more people are asking. So let's, uh, let's talk about that. So this is primarily and always will be a hiking, camping, off-roading, you know, that outdoor channel. But, um, you know, I wanted to take some time now to address uh, just the just the idea of our preparedness, um, disaster preparedness specifically, because I think a lot of people are curious and, and a little scared about what's to come uh, the next few months. And it it is it's scary and i'm i'm seeing and feeling a lot like when i go out and about it's kind of along the same lines as uh like march april may of 2020 like that same sort of um just air about about the community and <clears throat> so it's and i'm seeing a lot of um similar issues in terms of of goods in the stores that we saw, um, you know, I'm seeing limits of two per person at the store, and it really makes you it makes you question and wonder what's going on. Um, and if you you know if you follow the news, I'm sure you're quite a, quite aware of the you know shipping uh, containers and ships off the coast of California that can't get unloaded. Uh, there's inflation issues that were that's the big concern with the financial community. So there's just, it's kind of a perfect storm. And, and quite honestly, the idea of preparedness is really something that's not new. Um, and it's almost a lost art here in the United States, at least. I know there's a lot of countries that do urge and educate their citizens on preparedness, but the United States, this is something that we kind of lost touch with. And it kind of came not to go into a huge, um, history background or anything, but it really came about with this idea of the uh, just-in-time system, um, supply chain system. So, like, you know, I remember grandparents and even my parents, where you would go into the store and you would see something not on the shelf, it was an empty shelf space, so you can go to an associate and ask, you know, do you have any of this in the back? And they would go back and check, and a lot of times they would because they got shipments every so often, and they had to store those goods in the back. Nowadays, with computers and this this idea of this just-in-time system, is once certain inventory gets below a certain number, then it automatically triggers a shipment from the suppliers, and it goes. It's a very intricate system, but as we're finding out, it's a very delicate system. And you know, we obviously saw how delicate it was last year when you can go in the stores and there's a lot of food and paper supplies, toilet paper. Uh, for one, uh, they're, they're missing and it was difficult to find. And people saw other people in the store getting a lot of one thing or um, then that person would go and buy a lot of that. And I think I think that's really where the toilet paper shortage came about is that someone saw somebody buying a ton of toilet paper because they thought, hey, I'm going to have to stay quarantined. I'm not going to run out of toilet paper. And everybody else started buying. And, and that panic buying um, mentality I think could uh, could come back up again here in the next couple months, especially with the holidays coming closer and the supply chain issues. So what does that mean? Um, I don't think we're at a point right now where, I mean, you shouldn't really panic by, um, but let's talk about ways that you can get prepared and that way you're, you're not, you know, stuck with no food or supplies um, and you're able to, you know, take care of your family. So first things first is you want to set up a plan. You have to figure out what you go through and what you need each week. Start with three days. Um, that's generally the starting point for a lot of disaster relief organizations. They recommend 72 hours. And uh, so figure out what you need for 72 hours. And that's food, water, shelter, the, the, the ability to cook, um, lighting. So really think about and really to try to get into as much detail as possible for every minute of the day. Um, you know, you, you wake up with your phone, so you're gonna need some sort of uh, backup power, uh, whether it's one of those cell phone th cases, if you don't have an alarm clock, uh, your cell phone, if you still have um, service in the area um, for uh, updates, um, and then you wake up, you put your glasses in, your contacts, or in, then you go eat 
eat breakfast and you need food. So like, just think about three days and what you do throughout those three days, cooking, eating, drinking foods, um, vitamins, supplements, medications, hygiene products, things like that, and list down what you need for th three days. And then just start, start buying from there and get, get those three days. Don't go out and buy, try to get a year's worth of food right away and, and put yourself in financial hardship. Um, <clears throat> but you know, once you go to the store, start buying a little bit extra. If you normally buy two cans of soup for the week, buy five cans of soup for the week. Um, just things like that. Start slow, make a plan and just, just generally prepare. And that's, that's going to get you, that's a good start. The next step is to really figure out too what you need for um, natural disasters, other natural disasters. And you want to, there's this little exercise called possible and probable. And so you want to go through and figure out different natural disasters in your area that are possible and that are probable. Um, for instance, I live in the mid Atlantic on the East coast, hurricane season, we're starting to come to an end, but hurricane season is every single year. So those hurricanes, are they possible? Absolutely. Are they probable? Absolutely. And then, so you want to get some things that are, uh, some supplies that are related to, um, you know, surviving and thriving through those natural disasters. Hurricanes bring a lot of wind. So that might be some boards, um, for, for, to put up on your windows during heavy, heavy winds or strong winds that might be sandbags. If, if you're in a highly flooded area to put around on your entryways to your home, just things like that. And then, you know, just go, keep going through, um, again, mid Atlantic East coast earthquakes. Are they possible? They actually are. We had one eight years ago or so. Very minor. Um, is it probable? No, we, that was the first one we had in a few decades, I think it was. So earthquake preparedness is not really something that I think about, but you know, that it's going to really depend on where you live and, and it's going to change too. somebody in my area. Um, I don't have so much cities in my area, but if you live, um, in a, in a major city versus on the outskirts of city or in a rural area, that's going to really change your supplies as well. If you're in a city, you're not, and you live in an apartment without any sort of like outside balcony or roof access or somewhere that you can cook on like a grill, then that's going to limit your, your food and supplies that you can do versus, you know, I live on some land where if the, if the power goes out, I can, I can fire up the propane or charcoal grill and make a meal. So that's, you just got to think about things, um, really on where you live and what you have access to and then start growing your list and supplies from there. I don't want to make a super long video. I just wanted to really introduce you to the idea of, you know, there's, you're not alone. If you're, if you're questioning, if you're scared about what possibly be, could be coming in the next few months, you're not alone. Um, and now is the time to start slowly building up some of your supplies. Um, you know, if you go out and buy a bunch of things and clear the shelves out and that you could potentially start causing that panic buying, uh, mentality and others. So, you know, just start, start slowly building up some of your supplies, some of your food and, uh, and just go from there and start doing that over the next couple of weeks. Um, cause I think, you know, a lot of people too, they think of preparedness for natural disasters or things that are, you know, I mean, pandemic was something that we probably, none of us really saw coming. Um, but natural disasters could also be financial ruins. Um, you know, 2007, eight ish when the economy collapsed, a lot of people lost their jobs. So do you have food that you could, you know, supplement if you, if your paycheck's a little thin or, you can't really afford all the food that you normally could or do you have food now that you can afford or could have afford to bought at the time when you could buy all that food that you can rely on later as well so preparedness is you know it can cover so much and i think it's better to have something and not need it than need something and not have it so um just some things to think about i'm going to be releasing a couple other videos related to preparedness um i'm going to put out a a list of things that you can look through as well just kind of get your your gears moving um you know this is primarily off off-roading camping hiking just like an outdoor channel but i think that like a mini series i'll be putting out 
Um, but make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss those videos. I have some really good camping and hiking tips and tricks coming out as well, um, creating those videos. So make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, and uh, God bless and take care.